Recently, I was saying to our people, I said, every prayer you pray today is stored up in heaven for your needs tomorrow. He said, there are angels in heaven that hold fires before the throne, which are the prayers of the saints. So the fragrance of your prayers today will still speak for you tomorrow. So you need time. And there is no point trying to tell yourself, com confuse yourself, oh, you know, business and spiritual life, they are two separate entities. You are just one person. A spiritual man in business. And so you need to be connected to your spiritual root in order to keep on bearing your fruits. So you need help from heaven. The insight of Job was his strength in the day of trouble. And he overcame at last. No matter what you are going through now, you will overcome at last. Job chapter 29 verse 2 to 18. We need help from above. He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find mercy. Uh, I may find help and obtain mercy, grace to help in the time of need. Hebrews 4.16 In the time of need. In the time of need. In the time of need. Help from above. is a need, a requirement for every man in business, in any career, and in any pursuit of life. Why do we need to invest spiritually? For divine direction, for there is a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Most of the regrettable investments we made, they were not divinely guided. Every divinely guided investment will yield maximum results. They were not divinely guided. Proverbs 14.12 and Proverbs 16.25. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. How do we know which way God is doing? going? He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon my tower and I want to see what God will say to me and what I will answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord said, write the vision. Habakkuk 2, 1 to 3. So for direction. And when the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want goodness and mercy shall be following you all the days of your life. Let's wake up to the need for spirituality. And we will have stories to tell tomorrow. Spirituality is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. We need to invest spiritually into our businesses, into our lives. We need to invest. I'd like you to say, I must invest spiritually into my business. I must invest spiritually. I must invest spiritually. Invest in time in the world. Invest in time in prayers. For direction. For wisdom. For my desired victory. I must invest spiritually. Why must I do that? To be spiritually minded is life and peace. And to be carnally minded is death. Uzziah who began reigning at the age of 16, the Bible said he was walking in the revelation of Zechariah, who had understanding of the revelations of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. The revelation of the day was at work in his life, and the Lord made him to prosper on the platform of that revelation. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. And verse 7 said, And God helped them against the Egyptians. They arose up against them. And verse 14 said, He invented engines. Come and say business. Ah, He invented engines in Jerusalem that were positioned upon the walls with which they were throwing you know, stones. They were like missiles. The revelation of the day brought him there. And the Bible says, because he was marvelously helped of God until he was very great. He was marvelously helped of God. He was operating by revelation. So he was breaking new grounds. He was operating by revelation and was breaking new grounds. That's where you are going from now. That's why the Bible says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And to be carnally minded is death. 
one of the greatest American businessmen by name J.C. Penney. J.C. Penney was taught by his mother to have a quality work with God. And just like the story of R.G. Lotoroni, at a point he felt, look, maybe we try the other side. And everything came crashing down until he came back on his feet with God. And then God is taught his glory back in business. I know there are people here who have tried the other side. And the thing was hitting the, the rock. And you are here in this meeting. This is your best opportunity to retrace your steps. I said in my last series of teachings on prosperity, God does not need you for anything. You need him for everything. What have you that you have not received? God does not, God will never need what you have. Everything that you and I have today, they are from him. Because a man can receive nothing except it be given him from above. And what have you that you have not received? This is very important. It's very important. When I began to talk about the root cost or the root power, I'll help you see how to connect and stay connected so things can keep flowing the remainder of your life. For the past 25 years plus, I have not experienced any dry season. So I know it's real. For the past 25 years plus, we had never had a better last year. And I see the same baptism of unending progress, unending advancement become your portion from henceforth. The second cost in this contest is what I've called the intellectual cost. The intellectual cost. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. As I've often said, to be informed is to be transformed, and to be uninformed is to be deformed. The more enlightened we are on any subject matter, the greater the level of command we gain. The intellectual cost. My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. So your dignity can be reduced to captivity for lack of knowledge. We need a working knowledge of any venture we are embarking on. He said, write down prosperously and in majesty because of truth. As thy right hand teaches you deep things. Psalm 5 verse 3 to 5. So you need deep enough insight to command great enough dignity. You need it. Any vision that is void of adequate information we end up with frustration it is information that gives value to every vision I knew God told us to embark on Covenant University as a project that was great mm. but time was invested in searching and researching what kind of university are we heading for. So models were reviewed from a thousand years plus behind to the present day. Which kind of university are we looking at? Explorative studies of Cambridge University, explorative studies of Oxford, of Yale, of Harvard, were done with a deep sense of commitment to find a bearing for this university vision. 
And when we started, and tradition was trying to contend with the vision, I told them in one meeting, I said, stop. I know what I saw. When I see what I saw, I will know. What I'm seeing now is not what I saw. So it's not just having the vision. It is having adequate information with which to drive the vision. Information is a vehicle with which every vision is driven to its accomplishment. If you don't have it, you don't have it. When I was called into ministry business, I spent and invested time on explorative studies of vibrant ministries of yesteryears. The time I stepped into ministry, I was already more than 20 years matured in ministry as it were. Had read all the leaders in line with my calling. Had gone through 39 biographies, selected biographies. Had come to understand what makes ministry great and what makes it low. Had come to see how to escape a crash in the pursuit of a divine assignment. So it was easy. Intellectual course. That is where many people in the church crash today. People are in business they don't know one thing about. I know God will do it. I know God will do it. I know. You, I, will God cook for you? And serve your table? And put the water in your mouth? Will God ever bath for you? Your wife say, go to the bedroom. Say, no, I know God will do it. You will so smell, they will sack you where you are working. It's so important, the intellectual cost has been ignored. That's why many businesses are short-lived in Africa. That's why many businesses don't outlive their founders. They crash before the men themselves die. You walk into a restaurant in America and you find this restaurant has been in operation for 106 years and they put the pictures of those who have been eating there 106 years the one that started here five years ago is not there anymore because there is no adequate information to drive that vision it has to crash Isaiah 33 verse 6 wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of, the, of salvation Wisdom and knowledge, they are stabilizers of destiny. Every business is stabilized on wisdom and knowledge. So important. If Jesus studies, I can almost tell you where this ministry will be in a hundred years from now. We are already building plans for the generation coming after us, the one that will take over from us. We are still on. On the hotline. But we are already planning and programming for the generation that will take over from us. 